Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. On today's show, I'm a guest of Eric Lund and Esnagami Lodge. Our quarry for this week is large pike and feisty brook trout. We'll discuss tactics, setups, and equipment you'll need for this type of fly fishing. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. On this week's show, we travel to 14 mile long Esnagami Lake in beautiful northern Ontario. Renowned for its numerous islands, rivers and bays, it provides ideal structure for walleye and pike. Also available are trips into beautiful prime brook trout waters. Esnagami Lodge is a short float plane trip from the town in Nikina. My host for this trip is Eric Lund, owner of Esnagami Lodge. Eric has promised some exciting fishing set in the Canadian wilderness of Northern Ontario. On our first morning, we had the pleasure of an unexpected visitor at the dock when we were first setting up. This was no problem though, as the staff at the lodge knows how to handle young bears. So Eric, could you tell me about the fish and why they're here in the different parts of the lake? Well, the one unique thing about this lake is uh, it's a, it's a spring-fed lake, predominantly 80% spring-fed. So uh, as opposed to some lakes that would have a river coming into them, a lot of fish will go up and stage in the river and spawn. And then as the season progresses, they'll uh, move down into drop-offs, sunken islands and that. There's nothing that really moves them into any particular kind of moving water. So they shoal spawn uh, wherever there's sandbar or gravel or mid-lake shoals. They'll, that's where they'll spawn. Uh, so the nice thing about that is, is on a lake this size, it's, it's big, it's 18,000 acres. You can go five minutes away from camp. You can go an hour away and have equally good fishing on each end. So it really spreads everybody out. And uh, it's just, uh, it's nice because we fish all over right from the start. So, we first cast, and what Eric's done is you can see over my shoulder here, look at the weeds over here on my left, and I, I made one cast, gave it two little pulls, and it was fluttering, and just all I saw was a big flash, and this pike hit it, and it looks like it's a decent fish. You had a good look at it, Eric? Yeah, I had a, like, it, it, it's, it's a wide fish, a little uh, definitely, right into those weeds, too. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Oh geez, that's a nice fish there, Colin. Wow, what a brute. Are you turn him away from the weeds? Yeah. Whoa! Oh, so. All right. Uh, I think you're definitely gonna need the cradle for this one. Yeah, we'll get Way the cradle. Way bigger than the net. Nice, big, thick fish. Oh, Whoa. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm glad you have a good drag on that reel. Jeez. This is why you need a fighting butt. You can just stick it right in yeah. here and angle it. And so what I'm doing is I'm turning his head, turning his head. I'm trying to get him confused a bit. It helps weaken them. There he goes. Oh, that is a heavy fish. Wow. Look at that. Well, I gotta say, Eric, thanks for convincing me to deal with the winds and Work this weed bed. You ready? Yeah. There he is. Come here, girl. Oh, all right. right. Oh, Colin. All right. <laughs> that is what we came here for. Mid 40. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Wonderfully done. Good. Wow. <laughs> Beauty. Well done. Well done. 41. 
That's why we come here. 41 inches, probably. On a fly rod. 20, probably 20 pound healthy. Very nicely done. If you said that that was work, there probably wouldn't be too many people that feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful fish. And what, what are you doing here? Yeah. Move back and forth, just letting it revive. Take your time. The females are always the big ones, they right? They are. That is correct, yes. Yeah. So, now you're saying this fish is well over 20 years old, It, it right? would probably be 20 to 25 years yeah. old. Uh, big fish like that will spawn over 100,000 eggs in a season. Wow. So, so this is real important. That's why it's, you got to protect these trophies. You do. You do. We've been doing a catch and release program for almost 20 years here. It's quite possible that one was released maybe 10, 12 years ago at 35 inches. So, but uh, really nice shape. Strong fish. Yeah. Okay, let me give her a little tickle on the belly and see if she's ready to go. She'll let me know as soon as I feel her. Okay. There she goes. Thank you, sir. That was fun. Wow, that was exciting. <laughs> Fantastic. My first afternoon here. Let's see if we can get another one. Nicely done, Colin. <laughs> goal when you come to Esnagami and, and what you're going to enjoy here is, a, is the high quality trophy fishing. The great food that we have and you'll see that we really care that you catch fish and we'll do our best to put you on them, whatever it, whatever it takes. And uh, that's, that's our main goal here. So the way the pike position themselves in these little clumps of weeds is normally they're facing up into the wind. Yeah. So that's why what you want to do with your boat is try and position yourself upwind and drift on the edges so you can cast in front and to the edges, right, Eric, to get the fish to come out and strike at your fly. Because that's what they're doing. They're looking up because they're expecting food to drift towards them. Uh, you're, you're exactly right. They do, they'll sit right at the edge of the thick weeds where there's open water because they're, they're ambush fish. And uh, bait fish just naturally swim along the edge of lines of boulders and weeds and you know those pike just sit there and they just jump on stuff coming by. Nice fish. So what we did as you can see, the wind's really blowing. This is deeper water. This is uh, what, eight to 12 feet? Yep, exactly. And there's a, a weed bed that's down deeper. I don't know how big this fish is. I'm, I'm not taking chances. It feels pretty good. Um, and what Eric's done is he's back trolling us up to the top here and holding us in position in reverse. Oh yeah, this is a decent fish. And I'm using a full sinking line with a short leader, wire leader, to get the fly down in the water column. Oh yeah. This guy's not coming up. Okay. This is probably a nice 33 inch fish, yeah. maybe 35. Like anywhere in the world, this would be a nice pike. And here, this is just, like this isn't even a trophy. Trophies are 40 inches, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, it's still a nice fish. It is, yeah. But, well, you know, there's a, we, we catch them here in that mid 30 range because they're such deep fish. They're very powerful. Yeah. And, uh, they just grow slow, but they really put the shoulders on. Look at that, look at that muscle. What, what a predator. Now, you want the uh, pliers there? Okay, give him a push. There we go, there we go. Okay. Oh. All right, let's just have a look at one more look. Beautiful fish, mid sweet. Very nice, pretty heavy, nice girth on her. Let's go get her. Yeah, nice, nice and wide across the back. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Hey. All right. Let's get another one. Excellent. Most people come up here, they are looking for pike, walleye, and brook trout. And it isn't always the same guy that wants all three. So we get some people that are crazy to chase big pike around. We're really known for those walleye and, and big pike, as well as the river fishing for brookies. That's our main attraction. There you go. Well, probably the camera can't see this, but what I'm doing 
and I've got this blue and white deceiver and it's just going right over top of the weed bed. And then just as I get it t over top, then I'm letting it drop like it's hurt. And then I'm giving a little twitch. A little twitch. Oh, I got one following. He's committed. No. I'm going to drop it down again, dropping, dropping like it's wounded. That seems to really get him excited. Go! <laughs> Ah, there he goes, off into the weeds. <laughs> you got that technique down very nicely. Now, again, super big fish, but still nice. Look how he's doing this 10 weight. Oh, strong fish. This is a good practice for the 40 inchers. Yep. Ah. Should stir them up a little bit in there. Yeah. Okay. Now this guy, as you can see, he's got the fly on the other side of the mouth. He's got the, well, he's, I think it's just the wire leader's got on the other side. So I'll burn off a little more energy here and then I'll bring him in and get that out. And reversing each way, get him confused. And as soon as I can see his head coming up a lot, then I know he's ready. Come in. It looks like he's ready for one more jump. Now, normally, I like to keep them in the water in order to get the hook out with these smaller fish. This one's only about 18 to 20 inches. But this guy has got it sideways as well. So I'm going to try and do it this way. Pulling it out this way. There you go. And now he's ready to go. And off he swims. Well, the one thing that uh, we have noticed in the last few years is the popularity of, of fly fishing. It's really, really growing. I have a lot of guests that come up uh, bringing spinning gear, chasing big pike and walleye around, and uh, we get them onto fly fishing, and you get into fish in a 30 or 40 inch range, 10 to 20 pound pike on a fly rod, that is uh, quite an experience. It's, uh, it's outstanding. Uh, it's not hard to fly fish up here. We have uh, good information on how to do it. The guides are well trained and the fish are pretty, uh, pretty reliable and, and not hard to catch. So it's a great place to, to start if you're a, a new, new to the fly fishing. The next morning, Eric and I took a short flight to the end of Esnagami Lake. From there, we took a canoe down one of the brook trout filled rivers in the area. So, this uh, we're down here on the Esnagami River, and this is one of our uh, side trips that we offer from the lodge. And it's about 15 to 20 miles down, uh, down from the lodge, so it's a full day adventure. It's a guided trip here because there are a lot of rapids and you do need someone to uh, handle the freighter canoe through them. It's a, uh, a lot of really nice brook trout. It's specifically a trout water. There are some walleyes in it. Our average brookie here runs in the uh, pound and a half to two pound class, about 14 to 15 to 18 inches. But we do get them quite commonly uh, up to three to four pounds in size, 19, 20. 22, so uh, chances of getting some, some real big trophy fish along with good numbers of uh, average size fish as well. What I did was one of my old techniques I learned when I was first beginning to fly fish, somebody taught me and as I put on a Goddard caddis and I skated it a couple times over the surface, it took three times to do it. And this guy just came up and hammered it, Eric. Just hammered it. I saw that. I saw the splash. I thought you were using a, a surface. And, uh, okay, he's, I think he's ready to come in. All right. Beautiful colors on this male. Yeah, that one's gorgeous. Look at that. On a 508 rod, this is just fantastic. And what a beautiful spot to catch beautiful brook trout. All right, good stuff, okay.
The Goddard caddis is a, a fantastic fly. It's made of deer hair and you skate it on the top and it, what it looks like is a caddis fly. And I've noticed a lot of caddis, that's why I thought about it. I've seen some tan colored ones and so I put on about a size uh, 10, it's a fairly big one, and I was skating it and it took three times before that fish reacted. Again, thinking that, hey, maybe there's some sort of hatch going on or, excuse me, they're uh, laying eggs. And so right. that worked out really well. You got it out? Yeah, it's All out. All right, great. And let it go? Yeah, we'll let it go here. Beautiful brook trout. 